Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to the first part of this animation nodes tutorial series where we will be going over two very basic examples on how to rotate a cube using animation nodes. The first example, we will be using the current frame number to rotate the cube. And in our second example, we will be using the position of another object to set that cube's rotation. I'm going to assume you've already watched the overview of what animation nodes is and what it allows us to achieve. If you haven't, you can watch that here and the link will be in the description as well. I recommend watching that before starting this tutorial if you haven't already. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to our timeline window and I'm going to drag that up. And then I'm going to drag the bottom of that up, splitting it in two and I'm gonna change that to our node editor. Next, I'm going to make sure I am down here in the animation nodes tab, and then I'm going to click new in order to add a new node tree. Just like you can have multiple materials in Blender, you can also have multiple node trees and switch between them. Except unlike materials, node trees are not assigned to any specific object, meaning that no matter what objects selected in the scene or if you delete all the objects, the node tree will still exist. They're mainly just for organization. So you can add a node tree that does one thing and then one node tree that does other and it'll become very helpful when you have bigger projects as all node trees run at the same time. But right now our node tree is empty. So the first node I'm gonna add is an object node. So I'm going to hit shift A, I'm going to go to object, and then I'm going to add in an object input node. And what this node represents is an object in our scene, but our scene is empty. So let's add a cube. So hit shift A, mesh, add a cube. And now if we go down here to our object input node and click the eyedropper with our cube selected, now this object input node represents our cube. So we need a way to rotate this cube, a way to access the rotation property of this cube. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hit Shift A in our animation nodes window. And under the object tab, I'm going to add a transform output and connect that up to our object input node. So what these checkboxes on this node represent are what properties are controlled by Blender and what properties are controlled by animation nodes. So by default, all the checkboxes are unchecked and that means everything's controlled by Blender. So if we go into our viewport, I can rotate this, I can grab it, I can scale it, I can do whatever I want to it. However, if I start checking these checkboxes, I'm switching control from Blender into animation nodes. And so I'm saying, Blender, do not control this. I want animation nodes to control this. So for example, if I check the Z location and the X location, now the Z location cannot be controlled from within Blender and the X location cannot be controlled from within Blender. I have to now go to animation nodes and I can only control those from here. However, I can still control the Y position, but I'm gonna set all those to zero. And I have to go up here, set that to zero. But right now what we're after isn't the location, it is the Z rotation. So I'm gonna uncheck those two boxes and I'm gonna check the Z rotation box. And now we need our frame input because our first example is going to be using the current frame number to control the Z rotation. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go into the animation tab and I'm going to add in a time info node. On a side note, a lot of the outputs and inputs on nodes are hidden by default in animation nodes. So when you're learning and whenever you add in a new node, it's a very good idea to go over here to the, this right panel, which you can open by hitting N and checking what the inputs and outputs are. So for example, you can see three hidden outputs. We have the start frame, the end frame, and the frame rate that we can all use to our advantage later on. But right now, all we're after is this current frame number. And that's what this output does. It gives us our current frame number. But now you're probably noticing a problem. Over here, we have three controls. We have an X, Y, and Z rotation. However, we only have one input. So how do we link this frame number to only the Z rotation? And now your first thought is probably, well, it's because we only checked one checkbox. However, if we check the other two checkboxes, you'll see it's still only one rotation. That is because in animation nodes, there are two value types that we're going to need to familiarize ourselves with, vectors and Eulers. If you've taken a trigonometry class, you already know what a vector is. It's basically multiple numbers combined into one. So in 3D, a vector generally represents an X, Y, and Z position. So we have the X value, the Y value, and the Z value all combined into one vector. And Eulers are basically the same thing, except they deal with rotation. So we have an X rotation, a Y rotation, a Z rotation. And this is helpful once you start getting into vector math and stuff like that, where you can add together vectors, get the dot product, and more complicated stuff. However, we're not going to be doing that in this tutorial. But we do need a way to take the frame number and plug it into the Z value of that rotation Euler. And to do this is pretty simple. We hit Shift A, we go up to Rotation, and we combine Euler. We can connect that up and we can connect the frame number to the Z rotation 
and now you'll notice something else a little odd. What you might assume is that since it's, we're on frame number one, it's plugging one into the Z rotation, therefore rotating at one degree. However, it's obviously not rotating at one degree. In fact, it's rotating at about 57.8 degrees. And that is because by default, animation nodes uses radians. Again, if you've taken a trigonometry class, you know what a radian is. But in case you don't, a radian is the arc length of the radius. If that sounds confusing, it's basically you take the length of the radius and you wrap it around the circumference of a circle, and that is one radian. Also, this is where pi comes from. Pi is equal to 180 degrees, or half a circle. So in order to make half a circle, it requires exactly 1, 2, 3, 0.1415, the rest of pi, to make that half a circle. But in animation nodes, we don't have to do any fancy conversions. All we have to do in order to tell animation nodes we want to use degrees is by checking this little text box in this combine Euler node. And that basically tells animation nodes we want to use degrees. And now one frame equals one degree. So on frame 45, you can see it rotates 45 degrees. That's pretty simple. However, if we animate this, just like in our overview, this cube is spinning very slowly. So in order to fix this, I'm going to hit Control A to bring up the search box, and I'm going to type in math. And I'm going to add in a math node. And by default, it's already set to multiply, so I'm going to multiply this by 5. And now it is spinning 5 times as fast. I can also change this to 10 or 50, and I can get this spinning as fast as I want. So not only can you link the Z rotation to a frame number, but you can also link it to any value. For example, the position of another object. So in order to do this, I'm going to delete our math node and our time info node. And I'm going to go up to our 3D view and I'm going to add in another object. And that object for me is going to be an icosphere, but it can be whatever you want. It can be a monkey, it can be a torus, whatever. I just like icospheres. And next, we are going to hit Shift A in our animation nodes window, add in an object, and add in another object node, and with our icosphere selected, I'm going to eyedrop the icosphere. Now we need a way to get this object's location. So in order to do this, I'm going to move this over, and I'm at Shift A, I'm going to Object tab, and I'm going to add in a transform input this time. And once I connect this up, you can see it gives us our location vector, our rotation Euler, and our scale vector. But right now we only want the location. And in fact, right now I only want the Z location. So just like we combined an Euler, we can hit Shift A, go up to Vector, and click Separate, and add in a Separate Vector node, link that up, and now we have the X, Y, and Z position of this object. So I'm going to take the Z position and link that to the Z rotation. And now if I move the icosphere on the Z axis, you can see it rotates the cube on the Z axis as well. And again, just like before, I can add in a math node and multiply this by, say, 10 to make this faster. And now the cube has become much more sensitive to the position change of the icosphere. This is a very simple example, but in the next part, I will be going over how we can use the same technique to make different sized gears move in time with each other. And that'll be a lot more exciting and a lot more useful. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any idea for future tutorials, make sure you leave that in the comment down below and I will see you next time.